Hi, this is uh, Bob from Hobby Concepts back with part four of my uh, Tamiya dump truck build. As you can see, it's finished. So uh, we're going to do that. Uh, one thing I want to note, I have a new Facebook group. Um, search for Tamiya Truck Open Studio and you'll find it or I'll put a link in the description. We've got over a hundred members already. It's growing really fast. Great way to show off pictures of your truck. So anyway, let's get started. As I start the last part, um, I'm going to be kind of jumping around a little bit. I took the back panel and I cut a, uh, a window in it. Um, the customer wanted a window because his dump truck has one and it's nice for the driver to be able to look out and see the, uh, the dump bed. I uh, did a little work on, the, on this bulkhead also, getting it to fit properly. I added a center strip because I just didn't like the big flat um, area. I, you can see I've got a coat of primer on there right now. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is start working on the body. I'm probably going to glue this in before I paint. Usually I put them in after, but I'm, I'm thinking that the, uh, the red is going to be easier to paint with this already in. And then the bodies on these Tamiya trucks have got a seam line. It's really hard to see. I don't know if you can see it in the video, but like right down here, there's a mold line. It runs up here. It runs across the, the top of the body. And so what I normally do with those is take a Sharpie and you can, you can feel it with a Sharpie. If you have a King Hauler, you can look at it and see, but... And I'll color those seam lines with the Sharpie. And then I will cut them off. And what I'll do to cut them off is I'll scrape them with an X-Acto knife like this. Until it goes away. and then I'll wet sand it. And the reason I want to get rid of the seam lines, especially up here on the top of the hood, is when I paint this red, if you polish it out and there's a seam line, it's easy to cut through it and have it show up as a white line. So I'm going to take the seam lines off of the entire body as I get ready to uh, start laying paint on it. So I move forward, a um, couple things. First off, um, I got a trailer hitch in, and so this little trailer hitch is going to mount on the back bumper, something like that. I've been waiting for this piece to come in and finally got it. Has a little pin that drops in to attach the trailer. So I'm going to drill the holes and bolt this on. I've kind of been waiting for the lights to get that. The second thing is uh, we're going to add a light plug for trailer lights. To me, it makes this little semi-trailer light kit. And it's very easy to plug into the MFC. just has a, a straightforward plug and then a plug that mounts in the truck and then this is the harness for the trailer and this trailer plugs in here. The only problem is because we're doing a dump truck this plugs into the MFC way up front here. Let's see. Plugs in right up here and you can see that the wires don't even come anywhere close to reaching the back. So I'm going to have to cut the wires here, extend them. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'll solder them all together and then mount this little bracket. And then I can start mounting all these lights in the back end. I'm going to have to build a little bracket back here to hold this plug so we can plug in the lights. So I'm going to get working on that. So I mounted the trailer hitch. These little light bezels just slide in here and then the lights just snap in 
I'm going to glue those bezels in with just a tiny drop of um, CA glue. We'll snap in my lights. For the trailer lights, I made an aluminum bracket here to hold the plug. The plug's at a little bit of an angle, and this bracket will mount up underneath the chassis like this. It's ahead of the mud flaps, it's ahead of the back bumper, and then the trailer wiring plug will plug into it, kind of angle out a little bit, and uh, clear the bottom of the bumper. So when it's not plugged in, it'll just be a metal bracket back here. When it's plugged in, the wiring will come out at a little bit of an angle like this. So I'm going to go ahead and paint this black and then extend those wires and install it. There's my finished um, bracket for the, uh, the trailer hitch light wiring. And you can see I've extended these wires. I just used black wire. It'll be easier to hide on the frame. And then this mounts up under here like this. So I'm going to go ahead and mount that. And uh, I've got the rear bumper with the trailer hitch. It has a, a pin that drops in. And then the, the little clip can either hold this in or attach it so it doesn't get lost. So I'm going to mount that and mount this uh, back end and the mud flaps and run the wiring up. So I've finished up this bracket. You can see here what it looks like. The light wiring runs up underneath it. The trailer light plug will plug in here. And when there's a trailer attached, then this wire will just run back to the trailer. I also uh, cabled up the wires and ran them up. Um, so I'm just about done with the uh, with the chassis. The one project left to do, and I talked about it a little bit, and that is the uh, if the battery goes dead when the bed is down, you can't get the back of the cab off. So I'm going to run an additional battery plug down here, so you can plug in an external battery to run the truck. That way. Put the truck away, take the battery out, just plug it in down here, put the bed down and put it away and there won't be a battery left inside. Or it could be used as a charging port too. So I'm going to add that, tie up a few wires and then the chassis is basically done and it's on to the finishing the body. So the back end's done. I've got the mud flaps on, the braces, the trailer hitch, the lights. And I've got the trailer lights plugged in here just for a little test. So we'll turn the truck on. This harness will go down the trailer. We should have turn signals. We're working both on the vehicle and the trailer lights. Should be able to do uh, emergency flashers. Yep. And tail lights. So yeah, everything's looking good there. I think we're set just wanted to show real quick um, I took you know normally this is a separate piece that I paint and attach later but on this dump truck I uh, I glued it in filled it and uh, sanded it smooth to make that a one-piece top I thought it would look a little better with that candy apple red paint plus on the dump truck this area is going to take a lot of stress I'm sure it'll get bumped so I'm going to probably add metal horns too because those always break off. So anyway, filled that in. I've also got the uh, little hole here drilled in the front for the hood ornament. Uh, you can see I have a little bit of primer on there. I'm going to continue to primer it. As I uh, work to prepare the body for painting, um, one of the other things I'm doing is, well, two things. First, uh, you'll notice I drilled holes up here and I drilled some holes in the eyebrow for mounting it. I like to I like to bolt these on instead of glue them uh, especially with all the paint that's going to be on here. So I did that little step and the second thing I did I'm working on an interior. Uh, there's a lot of electronics in here and a battery and I just didn't want it to show. So I took a piece of cardboard 
made a template that fits the inside. Then I cut a uh, plastic piece that will slide in here. And you can see I mounted a couple of little plastic rails in here. This is flexible enough so that I can flex it and it will just sit in here. Uh, there's a gap you can see so the windshield will fit and the mirrors. And from the outside you'll just have a nice floor. I also took a Tamiya driver figure, glued it together and sawed it off so the driver figure will sit in here and give me some interest in the cab when the thing is put together. So I'm going to go ahead glue the driver figure on here and paint this up and when it's done the hard to show the inside of this the windows will provide the top to hold this in and it'll just kind of snap into place but that should work pretty well and it kind of hides all the electronics and, and uh, gives me some more interest in the cab lots of little jobs with this dump truck this is the uh, aluminum grill I need to make a screen for it I've got a king hauler grill here and a piece of king hauler screen which I will use for a template to make a screen for the back of it. I've got some really nice brass screen here I collect stuff like this so I don't know where it came from but I will use this to make a template and cut out a piece of this screen so there's my piece of screen and I will go ahead and airbrush that with some uh, to me a black and that will uh, and mount it with the screws and that will complete the grill. In the last video I talked about uh, the batteries and what I was going to do. So I've got these uh, two cell 2200 LiPos. I soldered Dean's connectors on them and those will will be able to fit in on top of this underneath the uh, the driver figure which I'll show in a little bit. Also I mentioned that it was difficult to like difficult and almost impossible to get inside the cab when the bed's down and then you can't get to the battery so what I did I thought about a couple different solutions but I added a battery plug on the outside and I built a little cap for it so that you can plug in a battery externally. That way you can take the battery out, plug one in here, lower the bed down, put up the truck all up for display and, uh, and put it away with no battery inside. You can plug in a battery on the outside to raise and lower the bed. So uh, that's my solution for being able to get the uh, bed up and down and the battery out. If Worst case scenario, if something bad happens, you can take four screws and take the bed off and get inside also. So I um, painted the body. I used Tamiya Mica Red, but to get the, the redder candy apple color, I used white primer over the gray primer. And that gave me this uh, really nice color. Um, also, you can see where I filled in that uh, hatch on the top and made that one piece. It turned out really well. So I'm going to go ahead and polish this and then uh, start adding accessories onto it and get it on the truck. I've added uh, some of the details here to the body. Uh, the cab lights, the grill, air cleaners. I've got my um, turn signal lights on. I, uh, I hope you can see it in here. On these... Uh, day cabs I glue a piece of uh, plastic across here to keep the wiring in the corner and uh, I bundled that into a into a bundle that'll plug in then uh, the interior here I painted my driver figure I've got a couple cutouts here and I glued in my brackets so now this will just fit up underneath here. I should put 
put it on this side first. Set up in the brackets. And should just snap into place, and it does. Just like that. It's trapped between the uh, bottom of the side windows and my brackets. And then I've got my interior in there. Now I don't know if you can see the driver figure inside, but this area here will give me room for my battery on top of the MFC. So there we go. So this little mess here are my uh, headlights. And what I want to do on this truck is I want to give it dual headlights. The uh, the Grand Hauler headlights look good, but they only have one light. This side is blocked off, and they give you a sticker to put on it, and I want both headlights to work. So what I'm going to do is I've taken this piece, which comes in the MFC, and has some, uh, has some nice reflectors in it. I cut this apart and cut these reflectors out like that. And then I took one of those and ground it down even more. Pop it out here. And made a little reflector. I drilled it out so it would fit the uh, the large size headlight bulb that Tamiya has. And then I cut the dual, the backing. Um, I cut a hole in it so that this piece will glue in here like this and then I can put my dual bulbs in there I took the frame and used a Dremel tool to cut out the second hole and that will mount over the top so I will get my dual headlights and uh, so it's going to take a little bit of uh, gluing together probably with some epoxy just to make everything really strong and then I'll get these mounted up in the truck and I'm going to plug these in so I have the fog lights plugged in on one side and the headlights on the other so you can operate them independently which means you could either have one headlight on or both headlights on so I think that'll look pretty good um, lots of fiddly little work but that's how I'm doing it to get dual headlights also the uh, the grand hauler you can see this little tiny hole here, and then they have this big opening for the bulb. And then they have this little opening for the light to get through. So I drilled that out to make the opening bigger, which will make the headlights a lot brighter. So anyway, get to work on that and get some headlights on. As I uh, work on these, um, this one I've got done. I've got this piece fitted in, but the way I'm going to fill in this back here is I'm going to use some CA glue and just kind of fill in around here. And then good old baking soda. This is uh, Arm & Hammer baking soda, which chemically reacts with super glue and makes an amazing filler. and kicks it off instantly. Now, if you use super glue and, and uh, or CA glue and baking soda, be careful. Blow that off. Because uh, the chemical reaction emits a gas that, well, um, it's nasty. So don't breathe it. But anyway, that, that uh, dries instantly, fills in that area. You can see I filled this one in and uh, makes it super strong. So now I've got my dual headlight buckets. Also, you can see on this side, I uh, modified the opening for the headlight. So my bucket fills in there with the dual headlights. I'll do the same thing on this side, grind it away. And then my, my headlight lens will fit on something like that. And that will give me my dual headlights. Well I've gone ahead and mounted the uh, the lights. You can see the two bulbs. I tied up all the wiring. I used my typical aluminum tape to 
kind of hold everything together and bundled the uh, wires into two two looms that will plug into the MFC. There's enough wire here that the body will come off and not have to unplug everything so it makes it easy to service. Um, the only thing I have left to do now, I've got a, I've made my my little lenses for the headlights. You can see the the headlight here cut into the body. So I've got to glue those on and I'll do that and I'm waiting for the uh, horns and I've decided to use Tamiya's metal horns on on this so I'll, as soon as I get those I'm waiting for them I'll put those on and I've got to do the uh, the uh, front emblem so I'll do those as soon as I get them and then we'll be ready to put the body on so I do have everything kind of tied up one one last thing I'm going to do on this truck since it's a dump truck I'm going to use these uh, Tamiya optional metal air horn set because the top of the cab being right in front of the dump bed might take some extra abuse. These are absolutely beautiful. They uh, they come with little screws and mounting studs and uh, they're chrome plated, they're gorgeous. So I'm going to go ahead and install those. Kind of finish the top of the cab. Got the finished horns here. Boy, those are beautiful. I have never used them before, but I am going to use them more in the future. They look really nice and they're strong. Mirrors, those plastic mirrors are always breaking off. I love having them bolted. Final item before I mount the body is this little eagle emblem. And I drilled a hole here before I painted, so I'm going to go ahead and, and glue that in. I'm going to glue it from the bottom and I'm going to use super glue and a little bit of uh, baking soda to make it really solid. And uh, then I've got this to the point where I can mount it. One of the um, things about this build that's kind of awesome is uh, I keep getting details of the real truck um, that the customers haven't built. And this is the front bumper. So what I'm doing to simulate these uh, openings, I was going to I was going to cut them with a Dremel, but I'd have to take the chrome off and I just don't have the capability to re-chrome it. And the chrome looks good. So I'm cutting the, the uh, openings out of some metallic uh, gray trim film. I made a little uh, template with uh, out of an aluminum can, my good old Dr. Pepper that I'm always drinking while I'm building trucks. And then I just cut around the uh, around the uh, template and pull out a little piece. It might be hard to see on the video but it looks really good uh, on the truck so I'm going to go ahead and stick those on. One of the last items is to uh, cut the tops of the exhaust stacks. So I mark them and then I just uh, am grinding them down on my sanding uh, with a sanding disc. Uh, to get that angled top. I don't know if that shows in the... To get that angled top. And then I'm going to paint the inside with some NATO black. As I get ready to finish up this uh, dump truck, I just thought I'd show a couple of uh, interesting pictures. I rarely have this happen. Matter of fact, never. Um, the customer's having his real dump truck built at the same time I'm building the model. So he sent me some pictures. This is his dump bed. And there's the RCP dump bed. So that was kind of kind of fun to see that picture. But what I really liked was how they take the a, a standard semi truck and they remove the they remove the sleeper section right there and take it off. So just like I sawed off the sleeper section on this truck um, there's the dump truck with the section removed, there's the sleeper, and they're shortening the chassis right now as I speak, so it'll be the correct length, and then they're going to install the dump bed. So they really don't do anything a whole lot different than what we did here with this model. So now I'm going to do the final assembly. So here's the finished truck. I just thought that uh, I'd take a quick second to well, show it off. I think it turned out beautiful. I'm very happy. 
Um, and let me just go through a few of the things we did here building it. Um, we took a king hauler, sawed the cab off and made a day cab, built a back bulkhead for it. That's in an earlier part. Um, I've got uh, an aluminum Peterbilt uh, bumper. I've got the Peterbilt logos on both sides of the fenders and on the grill. I've got the Eagle hood emblem. I've got Tamiya metal horns. It's got King Hauler lights, Grand Hauler air cleaners. We did a little extra detailing on those. It's got Grand Hauler mirrors. These are um, CB antennas and they're flexible so you don't break them off which is kind of cool. I uh, angle ground the tops of the uh, exhaust pipes and painted them black inside. I built an interior which unfortunately you're just not going to be able to see but it's got a driver figure and you can see it in earlier videos. It's got a RCP's uh, gorgeous aluminum uh, dump bed. It's got RCP's uh, rear bumper and we added a trailer hitch to it, Peterbilt uh, mud flaps. Uh, I'm going to possibly work on a trailer for this. We'll see if uh, that works out. If it does, I'll make a video. So uh, there's the truck. I'm going to go ahead and fire it up. We'll go through the operation. So I'm going to take a minute and go through the operation. Switch is up, radio on. Pull that down to start it. This is my typical radio setup. It has two on switches, one for the speed control and one for the truck. We'll let it start up. Now right now I have the vibration disconnected. It's just a simple plug. I can do it either way. Sound, uh, there's a volume control right here. We'll leave it down a ways for this video. So, uh, horn. Short horn. Uh, my three-speed transmission is on this switch right here. My steering is here. Turn this a little bit. If I pull this switch down, I have lights. So first are the running lights. And then if you can see it, you pull it down one more, we'll get the inner set of headlights. Pull it down one more, and we get both sets of headlights pull it down again and all the lights go off. Pull it up, we have emergency flashers front and rear. Pull it up again and we have uh, the flashers off. I can pull this to the right quickly and now I have my dump bed. The dump bed features a latch that unlatches when it gets up to a certain point. See the uh, speed control for the dump bed on a little plate down underneath here, and uh, and then I put the dump bed down. I actually have adjustable speed on it too. Now one of the things that's available. is the ability to run the engine sounds while the truck's in neutral. So I can actually run the engine sound with the dump bed, which was uh, important for my customer and is very cool. I can flip it again. And then I'll have my truck running. Engine shutdown sounds, I can pull this over to the right and flip this up, and the truck will shut down. You can do it again, and it'll start back up.
flip the two switches off and the truck is off. Now I also, as I showed in an earlier video, have a external battery plug down here underneath so I can lift the dump bed, take the battery out, plug it in here, put the bed down and then there will be no battery inside so uh, the truck can be put away for storage. So there you go, part four of my uh, Tamiya dump truck build. It was a great fun thing to build. I, I really had a good time. I'm very pleased with how it turned out. Uh, the day cab thing is, is sweet. I'm going to actually do a separate video later on how to make a day cab. I even came up with some better ideas after doing this. Um, and so we'll show that off. I've got a couple other videos coming up. But one of the things I'm going to work on is a trailer for this uh, that will haul the Huina um, shovel. So I'm going to see if I can get that done. If it works out, I'll do a video. I've got a video coming up on my Hemet trailer, painting that. And then I've got a lot of requests to do a video on the GT Power uh, sound system, GT Power Pro sound system. So I've got that coming up. So uh, a lot of stuff to do, but hey, I'm stuck at home right now like everybody else. So uh, there we go. I, I appreciate your subscriptions. Again, uh, I've got a new Facebook page. Uh, Tamiya Open Studio. You can you can just uh, go to Facebook and look for Tamiya Truck Open Studio or search in the description of this video to link it. We've got over a hundred members already, people sharing their pictures. I love seeing your pictures of your trucks. So uh, anyway, it, that's uh, that's what's going on. Please subscribe. Thanks for watching.